My friends and I went on a really, really fun bike picnic the other day, and I want to show you what I made. There's a few things I love more in this life than getting on a bike, and bike riding with friends is even more fun. So I invited a bunch of friends to come and meet me at the beach with their bikes, and we spent the entire day riding around and snacking, and had a nice picnic at the end. When I was thinking about what to make for this picnic, I was thinking it has to be transportable. It has to be kind of like safe to eat at any temperature because it was a really hot day and I really didn't feel like packing like coolers. It's hard to pack coolers on a bike. So I made a few of my favorites and I also made a couple of new things that I had never made before. So there was a little bit of experimentation going on and luckily it all worked out. The first thing is a classic bean salad. So this was a recommendation from one of the buddies that was on the bike ride. And it's just such a hit, you know? You can't go wrong with a classic three bean salad. Just a couple of cans of beans, some blanched green beans, cider vinegar, olive oil, or whatever oil you have. Avocado oil would be great. And some salt and pepper, and that's it. Some people put a little pinch of sugar in their bean salad, which I think is kind of nice too, but I left it out of this one. And this is just such a hit for everyone because we have vegan folks, we have gluten-free folks, and everybody likes it. The next thing was also in the salad category, and it was my tortellini salad with fresh herbs that I did on a video last summer. And this is so good because it uses Greek yogurt instead of mayonnaise. I feel a little bit more secure with yogurt than mayonnaise in something like this because I didn't know how long it would be out for. This is just such a hearty, delicious salad and it's so easy because tortellini is one of those all-in-one ingredients anyway. So basically you can toss anything on tortellini and it'll be good. But this one's got tons of fresh herbs, nice cherry tomatoes, and that Greek yogurt and lemon. It's so nice. The next thing was a little bit of a spin on one of my recipes. So it's the pea fritter recipe, which if you go to my blog, you'll see that I also make these fritters with corn and with other kinds of vegetables. Um, so this time I made it with corn and I knew that there was gonna be at least one gluten-free person on this bike ride. So I decided to test this recipe completely gluten-free. Um, I thought it would make sense to use cornmeal because it's a corn fritter. So I did the exact same recipe as my pea fritters, but instead of peas, I used corn. Instead of flour, I used cornmeal. And instead of eggs, I used chia eggs, which was just a tablespoon of chia seeds and uh, about a quarter cup of water mixed together. And then I let that sit until it gets kind of eggy. And these were pretty good. They definitely didn't hold together the way that the normal recipe would, but they still worked quite well. The one thing I will say is it took a lot longer for the insides to cook. So I fried them on the griddle, flipped them all over, and then once they looked done, I just put the whole tray into the oven for about 10 minutes just so that I could make sure that they cooked all the way through. These were so good with this green sauce that I get from one of my local stores here, the Root Cellar. It was such a good one. They disappeared really fast. This last recipe was the most experimental and it was also pretty fun. I was making these at like midnight the night before the bike ride. So I was a little bit delirious, <laughs> but it ended up working out. I just made some pizza dough. This was just normal pizza dough. You could buy pizza dough from the store, rolled it out into a pretty wide rectangle and then spread it with pesto. Now, I didn't have pesto on hand. I would have totally used it if I did. I also didn't have ingredients to make pesto on hand. So I ended up using the broccoli that I had and I roasted it slightly. And then I made like a roasted broccoli pesto out of it with walnuts, garlic, um, olive oil. And it worked out really, really well, but you could totally use any pesto. You could use my spinach walnut pesto, which is one of my very favorites. And then once that spread really thinly all over the kind of rectangle, I sprinkled a bunch of cheese on top. This was a sharp cheddar. And then I had like one tomato. So I just kind of scattered some tomato bits all over. And then I rolled the whole thing up like as if I was making cinnamon rolls and then chilled the whole thing as a log. You can see how big this log was. <laughs> I had to bend it. 
Um, I chilled it for a bit and then I cut them into basically like little cinnamon rolls. And I always use a piece of dental floss to do this because it's so much easier than cutting it with a knife. It doesn't squish the whole thing down. You just kind of wrap it around and pull and it works out really well. And I put these on the tray kind of close together because I wanted those soft sides like you get with cinnamon buns. And then I just let them proof in the fridge overnight, brush them with a little bit of egg wash and then bake them and they were so good. Everybody loved these so much and they were really easy to pack because I just kind of put them into uh, an empty cardboard box lined with a tea towel and they were great, super hearty, and it's not like a sandwich where you have to worry about things falling apart. And that was it. A lot of people brought bits and pieces like some fresh strawberries and chocolate covered almonds and everyone brought their own drinks, everyone brought their own forks and knives and plates. We kind of went from beach to beach and then at one point there was a garden tour in an area that we were in, so we ended up stopping at this garden tour for a, like a good hour. It was so beautiful. There were so many nice flowers there. Um, there was even a flower there that's uh, nigella seed, so it's black cumin, which I didn't know that we grew here, but they had a ton of it in this garden. So that was such a nice way to spend the day. And then at the end, we were all exhausted and we'd eaten well and we had so much fun. And then we rode all the way home and had a really, really good sleep. <laughs> I love doing bike picnics like this. I can't wait to do another one. And I would love to hear some of your ideas for your favorite things to bring on picnics because it's always a bit of a challenge. I hope you liked this episode. I'll leave a bunch of links down below for some of these things that have actual recipes. And I hope you're having a really good summer so far and I'll see you next week.